Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. I am Sean Anderson, Most Valuable Podcast, and the upcoming segment is from our full Fast Break podcast that we recorded. And if you do want to check out that full podcast, head over to Blog Talk Radio slash The Fast Break. You'll be able to find the full podcast over there. This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. This is the Fast Break Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Anderson. Alongside me, as always, is Ricky Wimmer. What's up, what's up, guys? And Dave Oster. Hey, everybody. And today, we are talking about Mello possibly going to the Clippers, apparently. Uh, big news that the, you know, it went from us talking about Mello last week saying, should the Knicks trade it to now pretty much they're being... being We're basically a New York Knicks podcast at this point. We are. Three oh, weeks oh, we in just a row. called it. We, we called it. <laughs> we just called it. <laughs> been three straight weeks of Knicks topics here on the Fast Break, and let me tell you, I'm sick of the Knicks, uh, and we also will be talking about the Cavs, which I'm not sick of the Cavs yet. You know, I still got still got to build it up towards the finals, because, you know, we, ever, we all know. It's but will be... they make the finals? That's a big question. We all know that the Cavs <laughs> are going to kick the Warriors' ass in the finals. Yeah. Then we're going to be talking about Luke Walton and his Laker comments about tanking, and then we're going to... F- Finish it up and wrap it up with Dave's team. The Tank Commanders. You're welcome. Joel Embiid. You're all welcome. And the 76ers. Tank City. The process. The process. Process. Philly. Trust AKA in Tank the process. Tank City. Has the process worked is going to be the, uh, the the topic there. But let's start off here. Mello, possibly going to be a Clipper. Should, or it's really, will Carmelo make the uh, Los Angeles Clippers, I messed up my words, Los Angeles Clippers a serious playoff contender in the West? I want to say yes, but no. Like, I want to say what? yes. I do. I want to say, man, that starting five of Redick, Blake, Jordan, if CP3, Redick stays, gotta throw that Mello. Asterisk. Well, to me, the things that I'm looking for, and this is a total Clipper side of it, I'm looking to get rid of, like, Jamal Crawford and Austin Rivers and maybe Wesley Johnson if you're looking to get a third out. Those are the three that I'm looking at. I'm looking to keep J.J. Redick because I need his hot hand shooting if I want to If you're going to try to keep anything. up with anybody in the West. Yeah. Anybody in the playoffs in your conference, the only thing is you got the Warriors and the Spurs. So it's like— And the Rockets. Uh, well, and the Rockets, but really Literally for, the highest scoring team in basketball. For that, it's more of a Rocket Clipper thing is a race to see who's going to get a three seed at that point. I, like I said, want to say yes, but I'd have to lean towards no. I just, I don't think it'd work out. I think this is going to be entirely about how well Mello can gel on that team because these guys have played together for a handful of years together already. They have their sync on offense. They kind of know the flow. They Mm -hmm. know when to cover on defense and switch. And like Mello is going to have to learn a new system again. And we saw what happened when he first went to New York and how much of a transitionary period he mm-hmm. needed to get up and rolling and be effective again. Uh, so that's what really concerns me is because this is kind of like the last chance for this uh, current iteration of the Clippers team with the same guys on this roster. So I think a lot of it is really dependent on you know how well they can you know feed Melo, how well he can uh, facilitate down low because that is – their, their game plan is is very nice, and it's uh, very much inside out. And what I like to see is how how many more looks Mello will create for them. You know, one of the things, we all know Mello is going to drop you a 20-plus, 6-plus, and 4-plus. So it's like, all right, he's going to give you a good spread, and he's going to be one of the most reliable shooters. You can kind of dump him the ball for free points mm. uh, pretty often. So one of the things I want to see is, all right, with that matchup as it stands, my concern now becomes how do they actually match up against these teams in the West, like you were talking about, like the Spurs, like the Warriors, like the Rockets, at the top of the uh, at the top of the West. And I don't know if that's a favorable matchup, even mm-hmm. by adding Carmelo Anthony, because they're so shallow on the bench. Then, well, one thing that that you can't you might need, not need to worry about at least you know. Easing Mello in is you do have one fourth of uh, Team Banana Boat there yeah. in Chris Paul, and then you also have Raymond Felton, who he did play for, uh, play with previously. So he does have some, you know, a little bit of, of experience there with him. And I, I mean, maybe Paul Pierce as well as being there as a presence. I know him and Carmelo haven't played before, but you know they've been in the leads, league well, like past the Olympics, well. maybe. 
I don't even know if they ever. Played I don't. Together. I don't think Paul. Uh, I don't. Know, I don't remember if Paul was was on a on the same uh, Olympic team as Melo, but possibly that that as well. But uh, you know, you just expect those two at least know each other well yeah. enough because you know the obviously the battles between New York and Boston then as well when when Paul was in, in, in Brooklyn. So you expect that to be be there a little bit. So I, I look at this team, and if, if you're saying that the starting five is CP3, JJ Redick, Carmelo Anthony. Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan, all these guys are healthy. I honestly think that they can at least challenge the Golden State Warriors yep. in a series. I don't know if they're going to be able to win that series because I'm not that big on Melo in general, but you're going to at least have an even series between Steph and CP3 the way that CP3 and, and Steph have been playing this year. Mm-hmm. J.J. Redick and, and Clay, you know, I, I would take Clay there just because he is younger, more th- athletic. Uh, KD and, and Carmelo... I'll take KD clearly, but still, Having you know, a crazy so you're basically junior. like you're taking the Warriors. Let's be honest. Well, you didn't let me finish. Uh, then you got DeAndre versus Blake, which I would say is honestly a push. I mean, I think I think De- uh, Draymond's a, a better uh, a better defender clearly, but I still think that Blake Griffin uh, athleticism will definitely be mm-hmm. able to match up there, and I will easily take DeAndre Jordan over, over Zaza. Over Zaza. Well, it's and one I think, of the I think Zaza. But, but I think that's where you can really beat up. The Warriors is down low, and if you have guys like Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan, we saw this well, with the Thunder last year, they were able to create a lot. Here's the better question, and this is could help the Clippers of why they might need to make a trade. What usually happens to Blake Griffin and CP3? Well, obviously the they, injury, they well, usually get hurt. So if that happens again, then you can say, well, we'll have Melo to lean on if CP3 goes out or if Blake gets hurt. Well, if, if one of those guys go down, then they're fucked. <laughs> Let's put it simply. If one of those guys go down, then they're screwed. Maybe they win, you know, get past the first round. But that's it. That's about hmm. it. If they, if if any of those four go down, they're screwed. If JJ goes down, they might be able to make it up a little bit, or it won't hurt them as much. But still, if CP3, Blake, Mello, or, or DeAndre go down, then they are completely done. I mean, that goes for any team. If Kevin Durant goes down tomorrow with a knee injury. God, I hope that doesn't happen. Warriors War- could still Warrior make it to the Western me. Conference Finals, though. I don't know about that. I, I, I would, think they I would still make it I would to the say conference the Spurs finals. And, and Houston could definitely give them a run for their money. I honestly think so. And both of those teams. Because those teams have gotten the, way better since 2014, how, 2015. However, but if both, both those, those teams, teams would, would meet them in the finals if the standings yeah. were like they are today. Okay, but then if you have a healthy Clippers team that just got Carmelo. I still think that. Like, the have, thing with me is I still think a Warriors team, even without KD, could beat the Clippers. But a Clippers team without KD that has Melo, CP3, Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, and J.J. Redick? You think that team can beat the... Really, to me, with the Warriors, it all comes down to how well are they shooting. And I know that the big thing with them was their big man, but I still think that they'd be able to take a Clipper team on. But that's besides the point. The thing is, with this mellow deal, I think of, and this is the thing that just popped into my head, if you're a Clipper fan, do you even want this? Do you want mellow on your team? Because of, like Dave was mentioning, it depletes your bench... You're pretty much riding that starting five to basically take you all the way. I think most teams are doing that now. I mean, really, so the only look teams at the Cavs. That, they yeah, had but the, what? But the Cavs uh, have eight man team. I think eight man roster in the but, playoffs. Last but year. the Cavs have the big three. They well, really, they have uh, LeBron James, the greatest player in the NBA, the second player, like the second but not the unanimous Michael, MVP. No, he wasn't the unanimous MVP. Of course, he wasn't. That's Steph Curry. But you also have Kyrie, who is clutch and can hit a shot well last year he hit the shot in clutch time one shot that, that's why well that's all it came down to all you need was that one shot Just saying. and that's what stole the series but the thing is with the clippers i think what would happen is if they make this trade i think that depleted bench would be the thing to come back and bite them in the end because they wouldn't have lebron james well we didn't oh, not a lot of teams <laughs> well, have lebron james and only one well of them i was saying LeBron that for the for the clip for the cavalier part of course the cavaliers don't need the best of bench because they have LeBron James. They have the best player in the NBA. But when we look at that bench, you have players like Bryce Johnson, Raymond Felton. You have Mo Spates. You have Luka Luka Mamamute. You have guys there. And I I think Paul Pierce is pretty much done. Uh, And and you're most likely going to lose Wes Johnson, Austin Rivers, and then Jamal Crawford. But Crawford isn't giving that much to this Clippers team. Austin Rivers has been a nice surprise, but he's most likely going to be the focal point or, or the, the the best player you're losing, and Wes Johnson's nice off the bench. But if you're saying who would I, who would I rather have on my team, a trio of Austin Rivers, uh, Jamal Crawford, or 
uh, Wesley Johnson over Carmelo, I'll take Carmelo. Even though I think that Carmelo is a completely selfish person, I think that Carmelo just, has previously shown, especially in the Olympics, that he can be a, a player that can not only facilitate and, and score, he can also just be a guy that can sit out there and shoot. And I think that's one thing yeah. that with with so Melo playing Olympics ball, Ooh, with, with something in trouble, with so much spacing that you'll have with DeAndre playing down low, CP3 yeah. being able to create, JJ Redick spacing the floor, even Blake being able to space the floor. I think that can really play into. I'll, I'll, you know, kind of perfectly for the Clippers. I think that would give them one of the best starting five in the league. Absolutely, They're, they'd be an extremely dangerous team. Um, the the one thing that I, you know, I know Ricky mentioned injuries, and we have to hope that you know, without injuries, that starting five legitimately could could take anybody in a series like to six to seven, no problem. And the thing that kind of makes me question it is just, I I, I think it's the kind of history of Carmelo Anthony that I'm not a fan of. It's, you know, he where he's been, where he's gone, and what's happened to those teams, and that's not success. Like, we see, you know, him on the Nuggets when mm-hmm. he first came in the league, he was supposed to be, like, right behind LeBron. He's like, mm-hmm. look, LeBron's one, I'm two, let's do this, and we'll be dynamic players in the league. And we saw LeBron kind of continue to build his game and evolve to become, you know, the greatest player in the NBA right now. And Carmelo... Melo got ne- lumpy. Melo got lumpy. That's that's a nice phrase, yeah. And that team couldn't win. And mm-hmm. then he goes and demands his way out to New York. He became a problem publicly, got his wishes, went to New York. And then we watched that team, I mean, not due just to him, due to a lot of poor management on top of it, but like another team where he should have had the chance to succeed and he couldn't put the team on his back. This is a scenario where he's coming into a like ready-made. It's like, come on, all you have to do is you know hit start on the microwave and you're good to go. Like This is a team... That is set to go for the playoffs. They are set. They've done it before. And all you have to do is fill in this one role, and that's just be well, there, be healthy in the playoffs, and be our shooter. And the one thing I just I think of is I just I keep playing back the kind of tape that we've had from some of the other like analysts that are like, oh, well, do players want to play with Carmel Anthony? Is he a selfish player? Because obviously went for the money and also when he – was a free agent, it was, oh, I wanted to be wined and dined because I never had that before. Went to Chicago, went to L.A. before choosing the Knicks. But the one thing I did want to bring up with the Clippers was Chris Paul and Blake Griffin, after this year, have early termination options in their contract. Blake has Let, said, though, recently that he does want to sign, re-sign with the Clippers as soon as possible. But here's the thing that I'm going with. Obviously, I'm assuming both CP3 and Blake are going to exercise that option because they want to get their money. Uh. They want to get that money from the boom that we've been seeing with players. Mm -hmm. If you get mellow and let's say CP3 and Blake want to pay raise, who are you going to pay? One of them is probably going to go, right? I mean, yeah, if you keep Blake, then CP3 walks. I would Are you going to be able to keep everyone if you have Mello on this I team? I would say you swing Mello right away, but because he's locked up for three, he's locked up for then two more years on top of that. See, I, I think the thing though, I think this is the this is the last year of these three together. I think this is the last year of CP3, Blake, and DeAndre together, and that's why I think they're making a move towards Carmelo is so that they can at he's least the make the most franchise. out of here. <laughs> Who Mello? Oh, you heard me say it. Mello's the future of the LA Clippers. Yep. He's, yep. <laughs> he's under contract for how long? It would be what two more years after this. He's one? gonna get that Kobe contract. That Kobe, that Kobe contract, at two years, twenty eight million or whatever that was. He's gonna get that. He's gonna be the new. Uh, he's gonna be the new uh, Kobe of uh, of L A. I just. I mean, think... what a catastrophe that city would be if <laughs> if both. I mean, I know I know Blake said he wants to come back, but if CP three and him walked, like, I mean, would you feel good as a Clippers fan knowing well, that Melo is your guy of the franchise? And actually, <laughs> no, I, cor- <laughs> I, I think so. I correct myself. I said two. I forgot after next season, Mello has an early termination oh, in this so, contract. So, so it's, it's really, not as bad. It's really next year because let's be honest, Mello wants, wants more the money. money. And also, I mean, well, everyone wants the fucking money. If, if the well, Knicks yeah. said, if the Knicks said, hey, I'll give you twenty more million, than the well, Bulls can. I said, yeah, fuck yeah, yeah give me the next contract. And I'm not trying to say, well, oh, we're no. talking about the next. They shouldn't take the option. I'm I saying that playing they with Derek Rose and Jim Butler, <sighs> Homer goggles. And I mean, how would <laughs> how play, playing with Derrick Rose get? Get Melo this year. I mean, they're they're not doing so hot. No, they're not. But that's also because Joe Kim Noah is like forty and can shoot like 
He shouldn't he have shoot, hands. He shoots I don't like think this. he's got hands anymore. He shoots like this. He's got nubs. So he shoots. He shoots. Anyways, <laughs> let's get off the nub joke him Noah. I, I just I, I look at this and, and you mentioned something, Dave, that I, I do want to bring up is that Mello is a guy that really has gotten a lot of hype. Mm-hmm. And, and I you didn't say this exactly, but I'll just put it out there. He gets a lot of hype and that he used to score a ton, but he was never mm-hmm. A great player. You look at his his stats, you know, overall throughout his career. He's never had a per over like twenty four, yep. and that's awful. You see superstars. Carmelo's over uh, around twenty seven. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, CP three. Yeah, CP three. I keep mi- mixing up CP three and Melo. <laughs> Uh, CP3 is usually around 27. LeBron's usually around 27. Russ right now is at 31. James Harden's around 27. Steph in his uh, uh, MVP year was around 30. You see these guys get really ridiculously high up in their person. If we're taking that as the efficiency rating, Melo's not that efficient. Melo is not a player that can really change your franchise, but if he's in the right role where he would be, I feel, in this Clipper spot as a shooter and a scorer strictly, I think that would be very helpful for Melo's career, and I think that would really push them towards the, the, you know, the, the top of the Western Conference because I look at you know the Spurs and I don't see them that much as a threat. I, I think that you know, what? I, I think that they're absolutely fantastic, and I think I think uh, Kawhi is a, is a complete stud. You but, were just singing his praises not only a week or two ago. Yeah, but uh, what a, I'm, not pra- <laughs> I'm not singing the praises of that team. I'm singing okay. the praises of Greg Popovich and, and Kawhi Leonard, but uh, uh, those t- those two are really the only things I see. I get it. LaMarcus Aldridge used to be a great player, but I, I don't Still see that. I don't see the same you know effectiveness as he used to have, honestly. I, I look at LaMarcus Aldridge, and I, I just see not the same player that he was in Portland. He, he just seems like... His game really hasn't translated well enough hmm. over to to Portland. And, and thirty six yes, and nine hasn't translated. Well, what I was gonna say was I I, I understand that <laughs> you just talk about the record. Talk about their record. Okay. Thirty six and nine is pretty damn good in the West. I'm not saying they're a bad team, Only but two I'm saying and a half they're not the well, yes. Okay, but what were what were they the last year? Team? What were they last year? Sixty seven and and twelve, right? Yeah, they're a good team. Something stupid. They lost in the second round. They can, but this is a team that yeah they lost in the second round, but I would still. If it's me, I'm looking. Warriors and Spurs are my favorites in the Western Conference Finals, and the only team that I could see Rockettes. beating the Spurs are the Rockets. I would say right well, now the Rockets. The right, Rockets are Draymond Green. Right now, without oh, right, right now without guy. a trade, I'll say That's Warriors. That's for you, Dave. Without, without a trade right now, I'll say Warriors. I'll say Rockets, and I'll say Spurs. But if you get in Carmelo on this Clipper team, I'll say Rockets, Clippers. Uh, I'm sorry, Warriors. I'm putting the Warriors. Warriors, hmm. Rockets, Clippers, Spurs. I think the Spurs are a very vulnerable team. I think they're a great regular season team because I think they have a fantastic coach. But you can't really you can you can hide that talent for mm-hmm. so long. And when you have so much talent going up against you in seven games, I think that's where the Spurs will be ex- exposed. And, yeah. and really, you know, you can you can bring up stats for Lamarcus Aldridge, but I just see the eye test of that team. And it just, just seems like it hasn't translated for him. For me, when it comes to the Clippers, though. And getting back to a little bit of the trade, I just think that this mellow trade might actually be, when we look at it five years down the line, the story that will be written is, man, did you remember when the Knicks got those picks? Remember when the Knicks got those picks and they're at where they're at right now? And where are the Clippers? Oh, crap. They got screwed. Because the one thing that I look at after this season, you've got... CP3 and Blake Griffin with their early terminations. And then that next year, DeAndre Jordan and Melo well, have their early terminations. And it's one of those things where with how much money you do have and how much those salaries are going to increase, yep. you only got enough money for a certain amount of people. You're not going to be able to keep all four of them. You'll have Blake and Draymond because I mean, I'm sorry, Blake and DeAndre. Why do I keep messing up my players today? Blake, You'll, you'll have Blake and DeAndre mm-hmm. because De- DeAndre obviously just uh, – Resigned after that huge debacle with Dallas, and then you have Blake Griffin, who I think is going to sign because he's at home in LA. Right. So I, I think that really the only two that you have to worry about is CP3 and Melo. Where CP3, while he's still a fantastic player, he's getting up there in age. Carmelo getting up there in age. He could go. And... CP3's game ages well, though. That's the difference. Well, I, the... I think he has a game that translates to any age group. Like he'd be out there at the wide killing it I mean, at like I mean, forty-five. But, no what problem. I'm saying though, I mean, he's thirty-one right now. Team banana he's gonna boat. Be, he's gonna Team be. Team banana boat. Without Mello. Don't put Mello in there. But it's just CP3. I, I, I have an honest LeBron. question for you guys. Is Carmelo Anthony this generation's um, Chuck? Is he Charles Barkley of our generation? He's round like him. It's a round mound of rebounds. He's a round mound of headband. I uh, mean, the only difference is he never went to a finals. Not yet, but on this team, he could. 
I still don't think, I don't he, think goes he will. To the finals on this team. I don't think he will. But it, he's such a. Are you a, just saying a, a, great, a great player that never had postseason success? Who is known for his overwhelming dominance when scoring the ball. And I know Charles had the rebounding mm-hmm. much, much better than uh, Carmelo. But it, it's yeah, it, it's it's somebody who is one of the top players of of a generation or of a, of a 10, 15 year time period. And you know we're just not going to see him be able to compete for a championship because there's just so much talent ahead of him. And I think that's all I see him as. I think he's never going to get there. I really don't believe he will. I think it's a very interesting argument, and I, I really can't disagree with it. I, I I can see what you bring up there, where he he's a guy that can score a lot, but you know he never and, has. And now he's looking team at his third him. team. And, and plus, he's you you could also just see that you know kind of the personality is bigger than the actual player. Where Melo, yep. there's this aura around him where he's he's you know it, it's really. You know, it's deserved in some ways, but it's not truly deserved. Where Chuck was a fantastic player, Melo's a fantastic player, but mm-hmm. you've never seen them take that next step where they were an MVP. You know, where they. I think Charles they... did get an MVP in the regular season. Yeah, well, he was uh, MVP in 92, 93, but I mean, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm saying the more finals like. Here. Oh, yeah. Anyways, uh, you know, like it was. You know, Paxton. That was the Paxton. Com- <laughs> combined between the two of them, they, don't, they have one MVP. I mean, you know, you look at them like consistent all star. For both of them, but yep. they really were never able to take that next level to greatness. Where Jordan was able to do that, uh, LeBron's obviously been able to do that. Kobe's been able to do that. You know, Chuck and, and Melo mm-hmm. obviously have been able to do that. And even like a guy like D Wade. I mean, D Wade well, was able to take that next yeah, step he as was. well. And that's why, to me, I think that it's it comes down with Melo. His biggest, to me, is knock over his career has been the personality. Because I think back, flashback six years ago, with everything that happened. The decision, you had LeBron and Wade, the big free agents, who's going to go where. And really, it could have happened where, hey, D, let's go to New York. Let's play with Melo. But what happened? Yeah. They said, no, let's go to your place. And, oh, let's call up our little brother, Bosh. Well, at the time, little brother, Bosh. I got respect for Chris Bosh now. But it's one of those things where they chose to bring in the mascot, the guy from, yeah, the mascot from Toronto. To play with yeah, them in Miami Mello's, rather than go and play Mello's, with Melo in New York. Mello's you were been. so sure they were going to New York, man. You had that drawn up. I remember. Oh, I thought no, I thought that Lebr- LeBron. LeBron like, James that, was solid in that, New York. I had that blind hope that uh, watching the decision, like please pick the Bulls, please pick the Bulls. I didn't think he would in the head, but I had that blind hope. You have a lot of blind hope in the Bulls. Well, yeah. would you? Would you hope Fan that he's going to your team? Do. I think everyone was hoping oh, that yeah. Lebron was going to their team. Shit, but even no, that's we, we're hoping. But no, we got fucking Carlos Boozer. But my point is, they chose to, ah, let, let's go to Miami, let's play with Chris Bosh, then just say, ah, let's go to New York and play with Melo. So to me, his personality, I if I'm the Clippers, I'd look at this trade and go, nah, we don't need him. Is Melo going to be a Clipper? And if Melo does become a Clipper, will they be a serious threat? He'll be a Clipper, even though I wouldn't have made the trade. And even with Melo, they will lose in the second round to the Warriors. Damn. Dave? I mean, Sam. Really? Really? I don't. It, it feels it feels wrong. <laughs> I know. I know what you're expecting on this side of the table, but I, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, I, I feel pretty much the same. They're they're currently looking for a third team to to add on here. I just don't think the the Knicks who, are actually going to. Who do would it. be your third team? Because I tried to work one out with the Celtics. It didn't work. So I'm not even gonna say I, it. Well, you have Dallas and Phoenix who have a ton of cap room. You have the Bulls who can get rid of Rondo, and that's a ton of money right there. And and obviously they don't want him on, on, on that team. And the Bulls are Bulls travesty. Stay, stay away from this trade. Well, you're not gonna. You might. You might get Austin Rivers, or you might yeah, get like West. I don't, I don't want. You to might get stuck. like West. I don't want hey, to get stuck with if we contracts. get Austin Rivers, that means we already have our head coach of the future picked out. We're pulling Doc away <laughs> Doc from that. Rivers. That's a good trade. <laughs> yeah, I would take trade. Doc and Doc next year if they don't win a championship this year. If Doc True. somehow leaves town, we got Austin. I don't think. Hold I don't on think to for third, Doc. I don't think the third team's gonna mean too much. I don't mm-hmm. think that's gonna be anything blockbuster. I mean, you, you gotta throw in. There. You gotta throw in some first round draft picks. So Melo still has value. I mean, as much as we should talk the man. He does put up 22, 6, and 4. Sixers would make sense, too, because they got just so many assets. Hey, so, trust hey, in the process. We'll get to him later. We'll get to him later. Don't worry. Sixers uh, draft. Final thing I want to say on Melo. Uh, is Melo the Jay Cutler of the NBA? Because he's always whining, always moping. Eh, I could see it. I don't, I don't like that one. Both yeah. on teams just, that have orange and blue I, in their out, colors. I respect, you yeah. throw out Charles. So I, I, I respect Cutler more than Melo. <laughs> really? Yeah. All right. That sounds Anyways. bad. Thank you. Oh, shit. Oh, it's just one of our videos scared me a little bit. Don't forget to check out that one. And also don't forget to check out patreon.com slash Podcast. But thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.